ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Yang. I am from Dongwa Christian Hospital. I'm a cardiologist. Today, the topic we will focus on the principle of care of chronic cardiovascular disease in pandemic of COVID-19. We can review the COVID-19 history from this year. Since 2019, December, COVID-19 outbreak from Wuhan in China. We can see this figure. The total infection people population is most in the America. And the second is India. And the COVID-19 outbreak everywhere in the world. If we see the, the recent 14 days, persist lots of new cases in some countries like India, Brazil, Turkey, Spain, and America. So if we want to go to outside of the country, maybe we have to take protection of yourself. If we re review the trend of COVID-19, the update date is 2021 April. We can see the curve in this figure. This is a worldwide new case. We can see the new case decrease from this year, February. But after February, the case increased gradually. Maybe the vaccine is not so good for patient. And maybe the variation of the virus How to prevent the COVID-19? I think the isolation is the most effective method to prevent COVID-19. But in Western countries, the people didn't like to use the mask. They think if you use the mask, maybe you are sick. But in Taiwan and in Asia, we always like to use the mask because we think they sometimes cough maybe from the mucus from the mouth. It's very dirty, so we always like to use the mask. According to the other study, we can see this figure. The social distance is important to avoid COVID-19 spread. We can see the black line. If no social distance, the number of the COVID-19 will increase very quickly. If the social distance one day later, the case will increase very obviously. So if we want to isolation, prevent yourself from COVID-19, should we stay at home without medication for chronic disease? I don't think so. How about the chronic cardiovascular disease? The major risk factor of the cardiovascular disease the first one is unhealthy lifestyle, just like the cigarette smoking, physical inactivity, or diet in high fat. The unhealthy lifestyle will induce the high risk disease, just like the hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, and obesity. Another factor is non modifiable factors like the age or family history. Of cardiovascular disease. All risk factors will induce the end organ damage like heart disease, stroke, peripheral artery disease, chronic kidney disease, and eyesight failure. So we have to control the risk factor. So in patient daily practice, we always take the medicine to control chronic disease, such as primary prevention. Maybe we use the aspirin or anti-hypertensive medicine or oral anti-diabetes medicine, such like that. Primary prevention, I think it should be used in general population. We have to control the hypertension, diabetes, and hyperlipidemia. Secondary prevention means you have occurred any cardiovascular disease before. So you have to control your risk factor. Just like the 
people with coronary artery disease, stroke, or peripheral artery disease. So in this group, we have to use the medicine or activity to control your risk factor. How about COVID-19 and the hypertension? The last year, the scientists find the animal model and the COVID-19 virus is bind to AC2 receptor and into the animal cell. So they, they hope maybe we can use ACE inhibitor or ARV to block the ACE2 receptor. So the virus cannot throw into the cell, but it's only in animal model, not in human model. Lots of doctors like collect the clinical data. We can see this figure. This is published on the JAMA, JAMA cardiology. We can see the gray line. If the patient without cardiovascular disease and the normal troponin T when admission, the mortality is about 7%. But if the patient with cardiovascular disease and the troponin elevated, the mortality higher to 70%. So if you have the cardiovascular disease, you should prevent yourself to get the COVID-19 infected. This is China data. The sample size is very small, but we can try to analyze this figure. If a patient with hypertension and the, the patient uses ARB and ACI, we can see the infected number is very small. But if the patient with hypertension, he didn't take the ACI or ARB, the infection's number become more than the patient taking ACI and ARB. The orange bar means non-hypertension, so they didn't take any medicine, no ACI or no ARB. We can see the number is higher than hypertension with ARV and ACI use. Maybe you think ACI or ARV can prevent the COVID-19? But now, we don't have enough evidence to prove it. So the NHGM published the risk factor of COVID-19. The first one is old age. If you are older than 65 years old, or you have any other disease, just like the coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure, arrhythmia, COPD, or current smoker, you get a higher risk than other healthy patient. We can see this line. If the patient receives the ARB, there's no difference. But if the patient receives the ACI, the risk will decrease. And if you receive in a statin, the risk is also decreased. Maybe ACI or statin has some effect of the COVID-19. So the committee in the world, they always suggest, strong suggest, recommend. Maybe we have to keep antihypertensive medicine in this COVID-19 era. How about the COVID-19 and the hyperlipidemia? Which lipid profile is the most important for us? LDL is a bad guide in our human body. The current concept is we have to control LDL first, and this is the treat target. So the ESCC guidelines say we can use LDL as a primary analysis because we have to control this one. And the HDL is not recommended as the target for treatment. The past clinical trials reveal the data. If we reduce the LDL one minimal per liter, we will decrease the cardiovascular risk 25%. So the ESC guideline show this flow chart. If we have hyperlipidemia, we can use statin first if we didn't achieve the target, we can add on easy time. If not achieve the target, 
under the starting and the legitimate verb use. We can add on precious canine monoclonal antibody therapy, but it's an injected medicine. In this year, the Nature Community published this article. If the patient uses the statin with the COVID-19, we can see in the primary endpoint or in hospital mortality, statin use, this group is lower than no statin use. And the vasopressor use is the same condition. It means if you use the statin, maybe your blood pressure is not so lower, so you don't have to use the vasopressor. Another journal reveals a similar outcome. We can see the all cause mortality, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and acute kidney injury. In hospital, use statin or withdraw statin. These two groups to compare. We can see the in hospital use statin, all cause mortality, acute respiratory distress syndrome, or acute kidney injury is lower than another group. So I think if you have a hyperlipidemia history, you have to use the statin. How about the diabetes with the COVID-19? This paper showed us the deep blue bar means total population. The hospital death is a relationship to your blood sugar when admission. If blood glucose is low, the hospital death is lower. If the sugar higher, and we can see the total population in hospital death is higher. The B means the total population. And see the similar outcomes of the glucose effect. So if you have the diabetes history, I think you have to control your blood sugar. We can see the bigger C. If you have diabetes, if your sugar is lower, your survival is higher. If you don't have diabetes, you have to control your diet, just like a lower carbohydrate. Because when you admission and your glucose is higher, I think the survival rate is very low. So you have to control your daily glucose as possible. So my conclusion is, in COVID-19 era, keep the chronic disease control. Don't forget anything. Keep antihypertensive medicine for blood pressure control. Keep a statin use for lipid control. Keep oral anti-diabetes or insulin for sugar control. And keep in touch with Taiwan because Taiwan can help. Thank you everybody.